everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, we're going to be doing a tutorial, doing a paint up of one of these Death Guard Pox Walkers Games Workshop styly. Uh, I'm going to be painting this using Games Workshop Citadel's contrast paints, and I'm always wondering, do I do I even need to do tutorials when it's just contrast paint? It's literally one layer in various areas of various colors. Let me know in the comments below if you actually need them, if you're enjoying contrast versions of tutorials. Now, the reason I'm choosing contrast is it works really well, in, in my opinion, on these particular miniatures, and it also makes them insanely fast. I've painted up some already, such as this little fella, giving it a little bit of practice. You're talking minutes, absolutely minutes. There's more time waiting for the paint to dry than actually painting it. So I wouldn't recommend batch painting these when you do it. Obviously, I'm just going to do one on camera because it keeps it a little bit streamlined for you. But yeah, if you batch paint it, you know, by the time you get to the end, the first one's going to be towards drying. I wouldn't say it's going to be dry because they're that quick and contrast takes a little bit of time to dry. Anyway, without further ado, let's, let's see what we're going to use. So it's so simple. I can show you up front what we're going to use. We're going to do some Gulliman's flesh for the skin. We're going to use some skeleton horde for these spiky bits coming out of his body. And we're going to, in the, in the artwork, in the demonstration version, he's got orange trousers. I don't have the orange contrast paint. And I, I think Correct me if I'm wrong or let me know that I'm right in the comments. It doesn't really matter what colours their clothes are. It's up to you and it's just an example that they provide you. So I'm going to do this and very specifically using Dark Angel's Green because I found this to be really, in well, needs a shake, an inconsistent uh, contrast paint. It, it's, it's thicker in my opinion than the rest. And I have picked up the technical contrast medium. So I'm going to try and mix in these together and, and making it work better for myself. So this is just a good practice on that. And then lastly, I'm going to use the Ayandan yellow, which is going to be for all these boils and any sort of disgusting bits I want to paint on him. So because I'm mixing these two together, I'm going to use a couple of pipettes just to slurp them out and mix them together, a couple of those. And obviously, as always, I'm going to use my hobby holder just to hold this miniature very, very easily without me getting paint all over my hands. Then for the brushes, I'm going to use my Red Grass Games brushes. This one's incredibly good at slurping up a lot of contrast and applying it on and then the detail one. Even this can hold quite a bit of contrast, but smaller than this, it won't go crazy. So this will be for the detail work. Now, links will be in the description below to all of these. And if you can support the channel and pick them up, they are affiliate links. So a teeny tiny little bit of that money, and it doesn't cost you any more, comes to watch it paint. It obviously helps buy this stuff to, to try out various things like this medium. Will it make a difference? We're about to find out. So onwards and upwards. I think the first thing to say is these contrast paints do need a heck of a shake. <laughs> Not army paint levels of shaking, but do give them a good shake. I'll use this as an example because you can really see you know, it's all pulled on the bottom. And you really need to mix it up, shaking it normal way up, upside down, side to side, just very vigorous. Probably give it a couple of minutes before you start trying to use it. I will be starting with this Gulliman's Flesh. So I'm going to do his body first. I would like to get the elephant out of the room, elephant out of the room, elephant in the corner, out, out of the room to begin with and try out that contrast medium with the dark angel's green, but uh, this can be drying while I'm mixing that up, that sort of thing. So it's just going to be one thick coat, plenty on the brush, and I'm just going to apply this all over his skin, every single bit. So all I'm going to do is be careful around his mouth, just to try and catch his lip using the big brush. But look, look at the accuracy. And this brush is pretty ruined now because I've I've done quite a lot of bad things with it, mainly painting over super glue. Whoopsie, that seems like a common mistake. Uh, I'll also be roughly avoiding these big oils, but I'll paint over all the little ones because the contrast will pull away from the raised part anyway, which will allow me pretty easily to paint on the Yandan yellow later on. So yeah, I'm just going to keep going around, applying a big thick coat, moving the paint around, letting it pool in all the recesses. Again, with his eyes, I'm not going to worry about colouring them in. That'll give it a nice shadow around the edge of his eyeballs. I'll avoid as best I can. You see, I've caught it there, but I'm not going to worry too much. because uh, I might worry. Actually, let's clean that off just in case, because the skeleton hordes actually fairly light. Now, I don't mind it pooling anyway at the bottom and it'll be a bit dark down here but I'll just just avoid this a little bit but don't worry too much it's not going to be the end of the world if you catch the any part of it really it's just going to make it look more and more disgusting so yeah go go around avoid the big 
oils, avoid any of these spiky bits that are coming out of him because we're going to do those in a different colour and avoid his trousers or pants as you guys say over there uh, and that's that's going to do nicely so yeah big fit coat just very very quickly really. One little bonus thing I've noticed and it might be obvious to everyone but you can dip this brush in, slurp up an absolute ton and then remove a lot of it on the top part of the pot that really really helps. But yeah, this brush can just pick up so much contrast. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention is this model had really, really bad gaps in it. So if you never use green stuff, do check out my video on the channel using green stuff. And I filled these gaps and it just made the model look infinitely better. Should also have mentioned that this miniature was primed using Citadel's Contrast Primer Rafe Bone, which is, is better for organic material, in my opinion. It gives it a warmer look at the end. And as this guy was mostly skin, I thought that was the be better pick of the two. Don't forget to do his foot down here. This is a normal foot on this side. Same as, as this foot. I think this would be semi-skin coloured and leaving his nails to be skeleton hoard in a little bit. And that's the skin all done. About five minutes and I was being careful and doing it all under the camera. So it really is very little time given that that is most of the model done. So I'll allow that to dry. One thing I've noticed while it's drying, I've put on a little bit too much and it's starting to flood out of his big belly. So I've just got a really, really wet brush. I'm just gonna flood this little bit below his belly. Just get this all nice and wet and then be slurping it back onto the brush and wiping it off on a kitchen towel to the side of me. And that's just gonna clean up that. I think the green will probably go over this fairly easily anyway, but it was a good opportunity to show you that, you know, what how you can fix contrast leaking if you're paying attention to it while it's drying. Could have just waited for it to, you know, dry and then repaint it on the base coat to just give a nice layer again to go back on with the next contrast. So back to drying again. Do remember while it's drying is a prime opportunity to shake them. Oh, we're getting there. Keep on shaking. Extra super bonus tip, you can shake multiple at a time. Why why limit yourself to only doing one? Yeah. Now mine's not quite dry yet, but I'm in a bit of a rush. I would probably recommend you guys wait for the colours to dry, but at the end of the day, it's just gonna blur these two colours together and I don't actually mind that too badly. So this is Skeleton Horde and I'll be painting all of the these spikes protruding out of him in this colour and it's, it's pretty light, to be honest, uh, and it will pull at the bottom and darken down towards where it meets the miniature. And yeah, it might pull, you can see it's trying to escape and bleed a little bit onto his skin, but I don't really mind. I think it just adds to the realism, like it, it's part of him. I, I'm assuming it's part of him. I, I don't really know what these bits are coming, coming out of him. They're disgusting, but yeah, that's working nicely. So I'm gonna go around painted the main ones on him but I might downsize my brush and get all of these little tiny little pointy bits all around him. He's got loads on this particular miniature. None of the others have got this many but all, all of these claws and any anywhere else but yeah that mixed together there and just it's just not going to matter to me but I'd wait. I'd wait guys. If I was you I'd wait unless you're in a rush like me then don't wait and it won't matter too much but be careful. As mentioned, for some of the smaller bits, I'm going to downsize the brush. I'm actually going to slurp up some of the bleed here using the smaller brush rather than applying more where it's just pulled a little bit too much off of the spikes at the top into this neck crevice he's got here. I put a bit too much on at the top, so be a little bit careful there, especially if you're using a big Red Cross Games 2 brush like I was, down to the double zero now. But yeah, I'm just going to steal it off the miniature because it's pulled a bit more here than I would like it to and anywhere that it's not gone on these small bits I'll just use the paint that I've already popped on the model so you can still move it around and luckily it dried enough that it's it's not merged the two colours together too badly at least. I'm also going to get this one's teeth in this skeleton horde just yellowing it down because it does dry you can already see it's drying on the tippity top this one here it does dry very lightly actually, just just slightly yellow, which I think will be perfect for his teeth. So just very carefully getting that in there, letting it pull around the edge of his mouth. Right, next bit, let's test out this contrast medium. So I'm not gonna need anywhere near as much as that, but let, this is Dark Angel's green. And we're gonna just, I'm just gonna use the pipettes. One, I think we'll have two, 
Ooh, that exploded. Two drops of Dark Angel's Green. Squirting the rest back in the pot. Looks full. It's empty there, apparently. So that's that. And then we'll do the same with the contrast medium. So I'm going to go for 50 50. One, two, two and a bit. Two and a bit of that. So it's slightly more contrast medium than I intended. But you can always do two coats. You can't do minus one coat. Just going to get my brush and mix these two together on the palette. So, in, in theory, this is just a thinner. Dark Angels Green. Now, I do like the Dark Angels Green colour. I just think, I just feel like it goes on way, way thicker than any of the other colours I've got so far. So in the artwork, this is, as I mentioned, the orange, and I haven't got the orange. So let's try out this green, and yeah, let me know in the comments below if it if it matters or if I can do whatever I want with these. I mean, you can in any game, you can do whatever you want, but I like them to match the artwork, so it's a bit easier to tell what's what, but I'm guessing in the game there's not really as much artwork for this. And, and like. The reference material I've got just looks like an example painted up miniature. So I'm going to leave these tabs plain, I think. It won't matter if I catch them because I'm going to paint them with real paint later just to add some detail to the miniature. But I'm going to just go around these trousers. This green's really nice. Oh, this is so, so much better. I can just tell straight away. Like before I'd got... Is that a belt? No, it's not. Before I'd got the contrast medium, this was just so, so dark and... It almost didn't work as contrast because th these are some bits I wouldn't probably want to touch up afterwards as well. Um, I couldn't really tell it was a contrast paint. It just looked like you were painting it all ridiculously dark green. So the medium looks to me like it's doing its job. This has really gone from my least favourite contrast colour that we had to this is maybe one of my favourite now. I really like this shade of green. Obviously, we're going to need to look how it dries. That's going to be the critical part. I am actually going to paint these tabs as well. I've changed my mind. I'll, uh, I wanted to show you like the next steps for contrasting, and I think it's what you do with the details. And this model's not really got any details. I've, I've picked the easiest one to show you because hopefully this is a very good place for brand new beginners to World, World I always want to say World of Warcraft Games Workshop warhammer to start painting with i think this is a perfect one if you've never painted anything give this one a give this exact miniature a whirl and you'll have a really good time i think but yeah there's no details to show you what i think you have to do with contrast once you've painted it like this is going fine this is all right but i think it really shines just when you start painting up the odd detail with normal paint and then you've got the speed of contrast but you add the quality of normal paint on top of it and it's I think it's really good but yeah not many details on this so i'll paint up another miniature just to show you some detailing towards the end i am so into this dark angels green now it's got a bit of contrast medium in i'm actually painting some of the extra models using this green even though i'm following the reference artwork so i i have the gray that i would copy along with but no this green's too good i'm going i'm going rogue from my usual copying reference material to adding some to here so i just thought i'd let you know that <laughs> genuinely this is lovely with a bit of contrast medium in. Now the skin's nice and dry. I'm going to use some of this Iandan yellow, and that's to paint in these big modules. Modules? Sounds good. Uh, I think on the big ones, you want plenty on let the contrast do its thing up there. And then the smaller ones, I'm using the double zero brush here. The smaller ones, I'm just going to carefully put it on, but don't actually mind, like there, if it goes on, oh, this one's pooling pouring i should say out out of out of that big module i don't mind i think it looks makes it look a bit more disgusting a bit more slimy i don't really know much about warhammer yet and why these guys are how they are and what these bumps are i'm sure it's something disgusting some sort of plague maybe so i totally don't mind and I, if i can find some this guy's got more holes than and bumps but if i can find here like a little cluster i'm just going to kind of paint paint the contrast paint sort of all over it so i don't mind that it it blurs a bit with the skin i think it just makes him look a little bit grubby a bit more disgusting so I'm really happy with that and i think you could do you could do this with any color i'm going to use yellow here but green would look a bit slimy a bit nurgle is that right i think 
in the reference art he looks a bit more green but he's just got blobs of gr green independent of these modules so I'm not sure if that's something else I don't know enough yet but you could do the same technique with a green if you wanted to add some sort of greeny disgust <laughs> to it but yeah yellow for me I'm also going to do their eyes in this the uh, Yandan yellow to make them a bit glowy yellow now you might want to a use a different color or b just use a use normal paint and get them really really bright i don't know how they're supposed to look again but i don't know if you saw there but i actually slipped and got contrast where i didn't want now i am wiping it away but actually i could see as it poured onto his cheek it didn't matter he just looked more grubby which <laughs> which, which was nice so let him dry some more so just while this guy's drying, and he is pretty much done now. There's not much more to do to him. And I have mentioned as I was leading up to this that I think you can really take the contrast from looking all right to the next step with some detail. And that includes the base for, for one. Once that base is there, this miniature is going to look pretty nice. Very, very tabletop ready. But yeah, so, some detail. So I was painting these up simultaneously or actually miles behind and I've just cut, cut them up. So they're still drying. But these, these two miniatures have got a lot more detail to show. So if you're brand new to painting, I do recommend to start with that sculpt. It's so easy. It will give you a feel for contrast paints if, if you're using contrast paints. But these ones have got a little bit more detail on. So some metallics here, there and, and left, right and centre sort of thing. So I'll just show you what I would do with those. So just taking a little bit of lead belcher silver. I'm just going to paint on these chains. We won't use contrast here. And it will give us a bit of a focal point to this bit as well, just because it's going to just look a little bit clearer, a little bit cleaner when I finish this up. So yeah, lead belcher, silver on these chains. I'm also going to add some to the belt buckle just here. The reason we're using a dark silver is just, just to give some room to highlight this up using a lighter silver in a minute without having to add any wash really. I'm just going to leave it as such, it might put a little bit of null oil between the belt buckle just to bring out that split in the buckle, which make it look, make it look a little bit more realistic. Now this paint's not quite dry yet. Oh, it is on the top. So I'm also just gonna paint in these studs on his pouch. And this is exactly what I mean, where you're taking the contrast quick paint job and adding in that, that little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of detail, which then makes it look a little bit more professionally painted or originally painted what we're what we calling normal painting these days compared to contrast like old school painting i don't think so right so i'm just going to do the same on this miniature as well bring out his belt buckle i'm gonna dry brush on these chains in a moment that bring the the metals there and just make it look realistic but i'm just going to paint on his mace as well in this dark silver so just carrying on with the detailing on these other pox walkers that have added some null oil now to the chainmail he's got here onto here as well and on this one's chains as well as the belt buckles just bring out a little bit of the detail there i'm just waiting for that to dry and then i'll highlight up those metallics but you can already see that's just adding a little bit of detail it starts bringing your eye focus to these details instead just because they're properly painted i think they stand out a little bit more and it takes your mind away from the contrast being slightly lower quality but it's a balance of speed and quality i think and the fact these are taking about 15 minutes each is win-win the same miniature i'm going to try and add some purple shading to his tentacle that it kind of looks like in the example one i think that just give make this look a little bit more interesting so it gets darker towards the bottom so i'm going to start up here and i'm going to try and blend it in to some extent and i'm going to add multiple layers of this many sort of moving further towards the tip so it's going to get darker and darker so this time i'll come down sort of 75 percent of the way once this is dry i'll go 50 percent of the way and then 25 and then i'll just put a little bit on the tip so hopefully that will make this more and more purple towards the tip of this tentacle just again just adding a little bit of detail just because you're doing it super fast with contrast doesn't mean you can't then go back once that's all dry and add some detailing to it and just make it look a little bit more interesting a little bit more detail a little bit more depth to your miniatures a little splash of mithril silver on these chains and just going to highlight up the raised parts you could even dry brush this but there's so few 
think it won't won't be too difficult just to paint each one individually back on and also way more accurate and that's going to be how i'm going to go around and highlight up the these little bits of metal that i painted back in earlier on and just really give give it some detail making it look a lot lot better in my opinion that's it guys i mean this is the very very easy one start with this start with this if you're brand new to painting not much to it and then these two just that splash of detail really makes them look quite a bit more advanced look at that purpling on his on his uh tentacles it was it's no real effort it's very very easy but i think that makes a big difference to it um so the last thing to do is to go go away and do the bases no miniature looks impressive until the base is done and i'm starting to take my bases up a level and i will be doing it very similar to these little fellas i did previously very similar but i'll do it in a separate video because Everybody paints their bases differently, and you might not want it like this. But if you do, if you like how these bases look, if you like how these two guys look, do check out that video. It will be on the channel. It leaves nothing but to have a look at all of these guys completely finished, having a little spin here. I'm, I'm very happy with them. I think they took about 15 minutes each, and if I batch painted them properly, I think they'd have been even less. Now, contrast is much more tabletop level, I think. On these miniatures, some some miniatures I've painted and they're better than I could paint normally. Maybe these are, we'll never know. But I'm very happy with these. Definitely tabletop at the minimum. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if contrast tutorials are a thing or if they're just too simple and you don't need that level of help. And also let me know which one of these six is your favorite. Thank you all ever so much for watching. You've watched it. Now go and paint it. See you again next week.